Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and this is part 5 of the 1970 Convertible Beetle Top Restoration. We're putting on the top cover, the final uh, stage here. And so what we have is here's your, your side tensioning cables that we showed you on the previous chapter that feeds through the top. And I'm pulling it through and I'll show you what this does. And you're going to want to tie this back here on this uh, outside facing I showed you on that screw on the last video and then there's your uh, your loop little doohickey I don't know it comes in the kit with the wire <laughs> uh, makes that loop for you uh, you want to pull that through to make a nice loop to go around that screw and then just pull that slider down and that'll keep that tight what this outside cable does is keep the top tight up against the frame when the top is closed and then even when you go into open it it doesn't go wandering uh, so it keeps this uh, nice tension here and it gives it a nice line so pull it tight enough to the point where you have enough tension so when you you know uh, flip it like I was just doing you have some spring to it in a, to some degree and the cable just runs on the outside of the facing there and then goes up into the top. And we also crimp that piece so then the wire doesn't back out of the, the piece. You just use like a typical wire crimper. Now here's the cable for the rear that goes behind uh, the rear channel on the 67 and later uh, convertibles. You're going to want to feed this through the top. There's a hole there on the, uh, the edge here that will then feed through the body. There's a hole there. I'll show you that. So there's a hole in the body down there inside by where the top uh, mounts, the top frame mounts. You're going to want to feed that through and I'll show you on another angle here. Try to get two of these cables because they, they, sometimes they break. And they're not that expensive so here's the hardware you're going to need. And see we feed it through the top and it's going to go in that channel you see on the body. There you go. So you feed the cable through that lip there. There's your hole on the body and then through that other hole inside the cabinet just like this. That's how you want to set this up. Okay and then you want to set up the cable like we did here. As you see the cable is set up in that channel. The top doesn't look all right just yet but I'll show you what to do here. And you need to get like one of these uh, putty blades and you start wedging it into that cable up into the channel so you don't see the cable you don't want to visualize this cable of course so and then as you're wedging that cable up you slowly got to start to tighten inside like I'm doing here just get a pair of vice grips and start tightening that cable just go little by little though you don't want to go very very uh, tight in the beginning so little by little come back out and check the top I forgot to mention that we also, you know, we set this top up on the front bow just pretty simply right now. Just, just slide it right over the front bow. There's nothing uh, uh, stapled down as of yet. It's pretty self-explanatory how to line that up. So you want the seam of the top to be equal with the seam on the body that goes then down to the, uh, the engine lid here. See where that seam is? If you're off you want to grab the top and then make sure you line up so I'm pushing outward here pushing towards the front of the car to move that seam so that seam on the top lines up with the seam on the body that's how you know you're pretty much lined up and straight there so we're continuing to work this it could take some time be patient and you also want to you know massage the material upward as well so there's the, the cable it still needs to be worked more might want to use a hammer my dad's just using his hand right now which is fine sometimes you might need a hammer to get that cable up and you want to continue to pull the top so this is how we just wrap the front of the top now you want to make sure this seam is you know you know down towards the car you know as you want to angle it on an angle okay because that seam is going to pull and we did start putting some staples in on the front wood bow there. So have that seam, I don't know, 
Uh, just pretty, you see how it's on an angle there? Angle it down because you know that top's going to pull it back once it starts getting fastened down. You don't want that seam to go up and looking, looking silly. And then we punch the holes for the pins. Make sure those guide pins are lined up with the holes on the top frame above the glass. So you see how I have that, that seam angle down? I mean, it might seem extreme on some points, but that's okay because it's going to pull it. And then we got some clamps to, uh, we glue down the flap on the frame here. We use some pretty strong stuff with this. And again, make sure the seam is all even with the frame. See how that seam here? Here's your seam. You want that nice and even with the frame. This all looks good in the end when it's all finalized, you know. So here we use this Fiber Fix Extreme. Extreme glue for extreme jobs. And uh, that seemed to work really, really well. Really, really strong stuff because again, that top's going to be moving uh, back and forth. So now here's the section uh, right behind the quarter windows. Here's the outside facing. Here's the angle here. You want to pull the top, and the top has a corner. See, there was a little white dot there that I made. That dot's going to be used for later for a, uh, um, a screw. Um, but basically, you're going to want to pull the top up just a little bit to give you some more. Um, a fitment on this back corner here. Now the top is up, I can fit this nice and tight. Okay, just make sure the corner of the, the material of the top equals the corner on, the, on the, uh, the facing, the outside facing like I'm doing here. And then that flap will then get stapled to the wood facing right there. Again, make sure your seam is even with the edge of the facing. And you see I stapled it right there. You might want to do a, a, a rough lineup of the seal. Rubber seal goes there later on. You just want to make sure the rubber seal is going to cover those staples. So there's an inside flap and an outer flap. The inside flap I pretty much left behind the material, and I just used the outer flap to, to wrap over. So now that we have that stapled and we have the top you know, uh, stapled a little bit up front and we have the, uh, the cable in the back, we have this top baking outside in the sun. This is the best way to do this. Um, I mean, if you're doing this job in the summertime, more power to you. If you're in a warmer climate, it's great. In the wintertime, you might have some more difficulty. Um, you're gonna, you need a heat gun maybe, but this is a great time to let it sit. Now you see, I, I started misting the top. It's soaked. You know, Just get some water uh, in a spray bottle even and just soak the top. And because that top just, just did not want to close yet. You see how hot it is. You see the steam coming off the top there. So we did this in the springtime and we had a good, ache, I think, uh, 70 or 80 degree day here in New York. And uh, slowly the top was getting closer and closer to the top window frame. And this is what will happen. It'll, it'll sit out there and just be patient and it'll start to stretch. Canvas material, guys, I think is, is great material. I know it wasn't original in some of these years, but it just looks a hell of a lot better. And it's, uh, it's just tougher material. Very, very nice. Here's our headliner. Looks nice and straight. I haven't cut the back window yet, of course. But it looks nice and straight. Um, you know, this is actually my first time doing a convertible top. So we also put the roughly put the seal, the front seal that goes in the front wood bow there on the top as well, just to make sure every the fitment all looks good. And as you notice too, the wrinkles start coming out in the heat. And then we were able to close the top and latch it down. That's what you want to do now. You want to latch down the top in order to do this back window. And see your seams are all lined up. So I uh, just like on my other headliner videos that I have out there, I have a headliner video for oval window bugs and uh, we do a slit in the back. It's basically the same procedure even with the top here. So I just made a slit. Just be careful. You might want to go on the inside first. You see I did not go edge to edge of the window frame. I just cut a small slit in the center. And then you're going to start making cuts like this all the way around. So then you can pull those tabs nice and tight and then you're going to staple this to the wood frame that, go that is the back window frame. And if you missed the other episodes I have, we show uh, setting up the wood on the convertible tops in my earlier chapters of this series. These are the staples we use, stainless steel. We don't want anything to rust, right? So uh, these are the staples that we used in our uh, 
our staple gun. And you see we start stapling just like this. Now sometimes not all the staples go in the way you want them to. Uh, so um, I'll show you a technique later on, which is nothing fancy to get those in. Uh, but you want to pull those tabs tight and make sure the top is wrinkle free. So go slow. I started from the top and started working my way down the sides. You see I start working my, my way down on this side. You might need an implement like this to hold the material in place and then have somebody else come in and staple. You want it to get as nice and taut, tight. And you start working your way down. And again, with it also beating in the sun helps a lot. So you get a little more stretch out of it. So you see I go to each side and then I work my way to the bottom portion of the window. Just like you see my dad doing right now. So just be patient. Maybe every half inch or so, every inch or whatever you want to put a staple, that's fine. So again, <laughs> if the staples don't want to go in, my dad used a little uh, flat hammer uh, to get them in. But um, after you got it all stapled in, I just used a razor and I cut the excess uh, tabs away. Now you have an open window. So there you see my dad using a, a hammer to get the, the staples into the wood better. And this is uh, putting the back window in. I have videos on this online. I'm putting windows in, so it's the same procedure with a cable around. And then we pop the window in and uh, roll and pull the cable. And then the seal goes in. Much easier to do on the convertible, actually, than uh, on a sedan. Uh, but same procedure. I got those videos on my YouTube channel, so if you want to see how to put in a window, same procedure here. And you just want to make sure that chrome ju uh, junction there is equal with the the middle of the, the rear deck lid so it doesn't look off. Now we started stapling the rest of the, the front area here um, and we you see how we have that lined up. Remember the seam you want it to be pointing downward a bit and then we also got to the point where we got to put the outer seals on and uh, so the, the little screws that came out of the original top they just broke. Uh, very small screws I think they were like number fours maybe half inch fours uh, so we had to drill uh, some bigger holes here. And, but you want to do a test fit here. So I saved my old, the old aluminum sh uh, strips like you see here. This is what gets inserted into the seal. You want to try to use the older uh, aluminum strips. They seem to have the holes lined up better than the aftermarket. Uh, so we went with these, of course, and I saved them and I labeled them, you know, which side I took them off. So here were some of the smaller screws that came out of the, the frame. Some got stuck and broke and we had to drill them. These look like, like I said, half inch fours. Um, I think we went a little bit bigger. Uh, I used new screws, and there's a the tapered head Phillips screw. Uh, this is a six. And I just, what I did was I, uh, I would get a drill bit just to the right size to, to make it. Uh, see, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker than the original screw. But that's okay. It's not like you're going to see them. So um, you want to line up your seal. And the seals are not, sometimes they're not cut exact size, so you're going to have to trim these. And you're going to want to line up your seals here and uh, just kind of get a general idea of where, where we're going to put them. You don't want it to go past, you know, your sections there. You've got to cut that on an angle, that back seal. And here's the other seal that goes over the quarter window. You see it's, it's out a little bit further than what it should be, so it should be cut. You've got to cut that off. So this is all test fitting right now. And then you insert that aluminum channel. And then inside you'll see the channel in the seal, and that's where you can start setting up your screws. So trucks convertible parts will sell these strips if you need them. But I, I saved mine and I labeled them like you see here. Left and right, and just label them when you're tearing the car down. So I got my screws all set up. You know, these are self-tapping screws. That's fine. But we did pre-drill the hole to a little bit bigger so that it didn't fight us. And what I like to do is, uh, you know, when you so I cut the edge here, but what I like to do is I start from the middle of the seal and work my way outward when you're screwing them in. It just goes in a lot easier uh, and, and even more even. You don't get any bulges. Same with the front seals here on the front uh, window frame this seal has to get cut on an angle. 
same with the seal at the bottom when the door closes you'll see here when I close the door you need this seal to be cut on an angle see that angle? see gotta cut it on a downward angle like you can either use a razor or you know what really worked well uh, was PVC pipe cutters cut the rubber really nice sometimes the razor can cut it like what I'm using here and kind of leaves a jagged not really a smooth cut but that's the angle you need to cut it on you see how my razor is that's the angle you need to cut that seal you just want it to be even with the top frame and then the same with the top part of the seal that that's on the frame itself that has to meet that seal on the window frame that also has to be cut on an angle see I'm using my pencil to show you the angle because it needs to meet that and marry together if you're able to marry them together nice and flush more power to you very many times they don't uh, meet exact I mean it was very common for the convertibles to leak so that's how your seal goes on I know it's weird how it goes on an angle when these things are uh, uh, screwed in but we went by the stock holes that were on the the top frame so uh, we just follow that and it goes over that that flap too at the top so it helps to keep that in position as well along with your glue to hold on the flap so that's how your seals go on and uh, you know we cut it off the top there and make sure it's just even with the frames you don't want anything excess hanging down or anything like that this one vertical frame here it might it might hang down a little bit to meet the other rubber on the body uh, but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory just do a test fit. Don't cut anything until you start test fitting first. So make sure everything's lined up. Roll the windows up and down if you have to. So I see I start with the screw in the middle and then I work my way out. That's the best way to get these seals on. And then here's the seal for the top. So I have the top down right now and I have the seal that has to get stapled into the, the top frame, the front wood frame. And you see you pull this flap up and then there's where you staple um, I know you could put a channel in there too I think there was on some bugs a channel that went in there uh, to keep its strength uh, but we seem to not have a problem there so my dad used a cutter here kind of I think it's a glass cutter um, to cut this front uh, plastic piece that goes in you know the front uh, bow as well the front wood frame above the windshield so when you close the top down this is the piece that you where you see the screws the with the finishing washers uh, through it but we noticed the aftermarket piece was just too thick when we lined it up it just hung down way too far I thought uh, and really didn't line up uh, well with the top with a nice finish so we cut probably a good inch or so off of that piece straight across and then we're actually going to wrap this. I know in the later bugs they didn't wrap this. It was the white plastic that was across that front, you know, that front piece. This is where the, uh, the sun visors kind of cover this piece as well. Um, but we wanted to wrap it in the headliner material so it looked all uniform. And that's what we did. Just with some, you know, again, headliner glue and wrapped it around. Don't worry about the back too much because you're not going to see that. So uh, if you don't want to wrap it fully. And then we got some... Uh, screws with uh, finishing washers these are number eight stainless uh, washers and then I even got some uh, plastic bushings here and the reason why I got those plastic uh, bushing washers because the, the edge of that finishing washer can sometimes cut your headliner material it's very sharp on the round edge there so I put that bushing there you can even put two if you want uh, and then I use that screw to, to fasten down this plastic piece so I also use some of these screws to finish off where the headliner's got to get its final uh, attachment to the facings, the wood. There's that corner there that needs a screw. Again with a finishing washer. Stainless looks good. You want to pull it nice and tight though. You don't want to make this all look good and uniform. So then when you pull it nice and tight then you start stapling it back to the, the piece of wood over the, the wheel hump area and then I glue the headliner even to the back firewall just to keep everything straight and uniform. You want that wall uh, where my, above my hand there where I'm showing right here that wall you want that to be nice and straight as best you can. So many convertibles are wrinkled. And then here's another screw here that's from factory right in the corner there gets a finishing washer and a screw to hold the top uh, to the body.
again those were like six and then I also uh, used one up here this is the front the front little pull tab that's up front by the latch screw that down and we got the remainder to do this front piece above the windshield inside the car you usually you just see this when the car is uh, the top is down is uh, latched and is up So see, I started punching the holes already, getting those screws set up. You see where this is going now. And you just attach it there. It looks a lot nicer when it's uniform with the headline instead of a big white piece. It just wouldn't have looked right. So, but this is pretty much where we're at, guys. And, uh, you know, this is my first stab at doing a headliner or a convertible top. I used to job this out and uh, I really didn't like the way the work was coming out so I figured I've done all the other types of headliners. Let me try a convertible and I think it came out pretty nice. Uh, pretty straight. Um, just follow my techniques and this is a five chapter series so uh, check out those other videos uh, and go back and rewatch and take your time and take notes and snap pictures you know uh, for reference. These are the assist straps that we're putting on and I got these uh, custom made from SoFine. So fine is excellent. Uh, you know, if you ever need more material, more headliner material to wrap up stuff that, like I did in this for this top, uh, she'll give you extra uh, material. So a lot of this headliner material that I got, I told her to give me some extra yardage so I can use it. Uh, but this is how you attach the assist straps and that hook. Those holes should already be there in your top frame. So, but this is it, guys. Uh, basically, you've made it through a convertible top. 67 and later beetles. If you have earlier beetles, uh, you could pretty much use still the same techniques. I know they did not have the cable in the back, uh, but below the back window on the uh, the earlier beetles, but they usually had a strip of chrome that went around that had to be nailed into wood. So, um, but basically, this is how you do the convertible top, and it could be tedious. It took us a while to do this. It took us a good few days just to shape the wood to get that to to be to be right and. Um, you know, I showed you that in the earlier videos. Uh, and just, you know, it's a good week or so, week and a half. You've never done it before. But uh, this was the finished product. Uh, this was the car that, uh, that we wrapped up. And uh, 1970 convertible Beetle. Um, found this car in my backyard, pretty much a little upstate for me. And sitting in a guy's uh, outside his uh, driveway for over 35 years. So, but... Um, uh, I'd love to hear your comments, guys, and uh, if you got any other uh, tips or techniques on ways to do things better with this top, please, I'm all ears. And uh, that's it. Hope all is well. Be sure to subscribe, and uh, I'll speak to you later. Uh -huh.